Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video we're gonna do features and improvements I would like to see in Tower Heroes part 2. These are features that I think will either enhance the gameplay or improve upon already existing features. We already did two videos in this series, one which was features and improvements like this one and the other one was features and improvements for content creators. But this video is gonna follow the exact same path as the first video, aka features and improvements for the normal user, aka you guys. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Ah, the settings. Some of the most boring, but also important features on a game. The first improvement that I would want to the settings is something that I have mentioned in all the videos already. And that is to make all the settings safe. Saving settings is such an important thing in games, like resolution, graphic quality, and while Tower Heroes doesn't really use resolution and graphic quality, they use other stuff like mute spectre, move the sound, and most importantly, height attacks. Height attacks is something that should be saved 100%. Because if somebody with a really bad PC forgets to turn off attacks for the millionth time and he crashes, there is a chance that he will get fed up with it and leave the game. Which isn't what you want. Of course, I also want some new features built into the settings. And one of those is mute attacks. I personally love seeing the attacks. They have a lot of personality, they are cool, and you wanna see them, they are really well designed. But some attacks, <coughs> scientist, <coughs> are loud. And at that point, I would rather just mute all attacks, but still be able to see them. The second feature I want is something that is kind of similar to height attacks, in the way that it helps people with a low-end PC or a mobile or even Xbox play the game. Because when you make a game, of course you want as much players as possible, even those with low-end PCs. But there is a problem. The game lags. So this feature might seem a little dumb to some of you guys. Probably because you have a really good PC or you can run Tower Heroes very well. But the feature that I want is height towers. And this is what it would look like. You got all the vocas just standing on the path and you turn on height towers and boom. PNG images of the towers. Now, that probably won't increase performance by a lot. But even if the little bit improvement that it gives brings in 200 Xbox players, 50 mobile players, a thousand PC players that normally couldn't play your game, I feel like it is worth it. Ooh. Moving on from the settings, I want to talk about something that I've already talked before, but I feel like this one is super important. And that is to be able to see the range of towers that aren't your own tower. Just seeing the basic info that you also see when you click on your own tower. So this is important for a couple of reasons. For one, it is something that I've been asked a lot. Like I invite some friends with me to a game that never played Roblox before, but they saw Tower Heroes on my channel and they were like, oh, that looks cool, let's try it out. They go in the game and the first thing they ask is, how do I see the range of your Spectre? How do I see the range of your Voca? I want to place my towers in a way that compensate your range. But I can't see your range. Why is that? It is such an important feature for teamwork. Because let's be honest, nobody can memorize all the ranges out of the top of their head. There are balance changes, ranges change. This is just something that's needed. Ooh. Ah, we end up with the big one. So, there is a problem right now in Tower Heroes, and that is the declining player count. And the reason for that is, people join the game, they get all the new skins from the new maps, and they leave. 
So luckily, Hilo and Smelly are aware of this and try their best to fix it. Their fix right now is making a casual mode. And to be honest, we don't have enough information about casual mode yet to predict if it will work or not. But I do have another suggestion that might work to keep players invested in the game, and that is quests. But before we talk about quests, we're gonna talk about something that everybody's gonna hate. We're gonna lower the coin reward of each map by minus 10. So, before you get mad, no, I can't grind anymore, listen. The quests will give you 20 coins. So, if you do all your quests, which keep recycling every time, you should end up with more coins. So, what do these quests entail? Well, the quests entail simple objectives that will keep you playing the game, that keep rotate out. For example, a quest like two heads are better than one, which basically require you to play with another player. Another quest can be clear skies, play a one star match, or even madness, play a match on chaos kingdom. Something that you probably realize is that these quests aren't set in stone, so they aren't like play Pirate Panic on hard. They are kind of a little bit more loose to still give the player the gameplay experience that they want, but still give them small objectives. So why do I think this would work? Imagine this, you're playing your last match, let's say alien attack medium, you're helping a friend, but you're getting kind of tired of the game. So you come back in the lobby and all of a sudden you see this quest. Play a one star match and get 20 coins. So you go, oh, you know what? That's actually pretty easy. I can do it in 50 minutes. 20 coins is kind of nice. Let's go. And you go do that quest. You come back and you see another quest, maybe for rooftop rumble. And you're like, you know, I actually haven't played that map in a while. Let's go. And before you know it, you're two hours in the future and well, you basically have been playing the game for two hours longer than you would have had otherwise. And for the hardcore grinders, this will give you 10 more coins than your normal maps and give you an incentive to actually play other maps. Ooh. Last but not least, tutorial. So when you are hearing this, you'll probably have the same reaction when I heard it, because the tutorial is not my ID. I have seen tutorial being suggested so many times and at first I was like it's just a tower defense game, we don't need a tutorial. But the more I see it requested and the more I think about it, it is absolutely necessary. Whatever you want to admit it or not, Roblox is a game for kids and we can't assume that every kid has played a tower defense game in their life. Maybe they expect to get a sword or magic attacks or something when they play the game. They get in a match, maybe they go to frantic forest because oh that looks cool and they fail miserably. They leave the game never to be seen again. Now don't get me wrong, the tutorial should be really simple and this is how it should work. There should be a badge in the game, which is called You Completed the Tutorial. When you join the game, the system checks your account and sees, does this player have the badge? If he does not have the badge, you get automatically teleported to the tutorial world. AKA, you have to play your tutorial at least once. I'm so sorry high level players, but even you guys gotta play the tutorial once. So. What is a tutorial? It is super simple. You got one lane, you got wizard, and that's it. The first objective in a tutorial will be you walking to a corner of the path, aka learning the player, oh, you gotta find strategic points to place your towers, aka at corners. So when the player reaches the corner, it's just gonna say, hey, place a wizard down. Player plays the wizards down, when the wizard is down, it spawns one enemy. Enemy walks along, enemy dies. All good. Then there are three minutes, three minutes, which basically says to the player, place a lot of wizards. Player plays a lot of wizards, maybe one or two enemies spawn, all good. At the end, one boss spawns, 
boss spawns has low HP because it's just a tutorial. The player wins and knows how a basic round goes. He gets the badge and never has to play the tutorial again. The end. I feel like because this tutorial would only last for like 5 minutes, it wouldn't be too tedious on the player to leave, but still be engaging enough for the player to stay. It teaches you the basics, which are important, and lets you start the game with a feeling of completement, because you can pop up the badge and be like, congratulations, you did the tutorial, woo, here you have a free skin, for example, who knows, maybe he gets one free crate unboxing, something like that, the player feels good about him, is gonna play the game, maybe make some friends, and he probably joins this awesome community, which is what the end goal is at the end of the day. I know we did this video a little bit more differently than we do normally, so let me know what you think of this. It took actually a long time to prepare. But anyway guys, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, please hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!